relaxed post-holiday attire. I hope you all enjoyed the... Uh, I, hope, I hope you all in, enjoyed your uh, relaxing month off. And we've got a fairly easy agenda tonight to ease you back in, ready for the autumn and winter uh, struggles ahead. Uh, we are actually waiting for somebody of Councillor Hope, actually, uh, who hasn't given apologies for absence, uh, but I think we will just press on with the meeting. Um, if I could remind you, as usual, to, to turn off your mobile phones. <laughs> Thank you. and speak clearly and succinctly into your microphones. Uh, you're probably accustomed in the past to, well, in the very recent past, because they haven't been here that long, the television cameras usually zoom in on the person who's speaking. So that's why it's important that you speak clearly into the microphone so that the cameras know where they are. But apparently there's been some sort of technical hitch. So they'll now all be on wide angle, so you don't have to worry about looking your best for the, for the camera. Um, I think that's about it. So if we'd like to start with agenda item one, which is apologies for absence and substitutions, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Chair. All present and correct. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Same here as well. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, item two on the agenda is to approve the correct record, the minutes of the meeting held on the 28th of July 2021, which you'll find on pages 5 to 21 of your agenda papers. Would anybody like to move? Move. Second. Second. Okay, all those who agree that it is a correct record, please show. And again, stand abstentions. Okay, thank you very much. Now the planning committee protocol, which you'll find on pages 23 to 25 on your agenda papers. I'm sure you've uh, all read it and been swatting up on it over the last month while you've uh, got uh, no other planning commitments to, uh, to see to. So then we have item three, which is declaration of interests. I've got a collective non declaration of non-pecuniary interest on behalf of the committee uh, on, the, uh, on application number 2021-0240 Burnt Stump Country Park, as that is in the ownership of the council. Any personal uh, declarations of interest? No. Okay, we'll move on to item four on the agenda, which is application number 2021 stroke 0238, which you'll find on page 28 of your agenda papers, which is 19 Thackeray's Lane, extension to existing Cotswood House, preschool and day nursery, etc., etc. And um, I'll ask Principal Planning Officer Kevin Cartwright to introduce this item for us. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the proposal relates to the extension of the existing nursery to in increase the number of children on the site at any one time to 48. At paragraph 3.3 .3 in the main report, the applicant provides an explanation as to how they would operate. Based on this, it's anticipated that more children will be dropped off earlier and picked up later than is currently the case the opening hours would be extended to, to 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. This would spread the number of drop-offs and collections over a longer period beyond the 9 o'clock in the morning and 4, and 4 p.m. in the evening, as is currently the situation, with parents accessing the free care. There is no objection to the proposed scheme from the Highway Authority. They have assessed the proposal and are of the opinion that the scheme would not, have, not be detrimental to highway safety. We've received a further email objection from a neighbouring occupier. The email reiterates the concern in relation to parking on the footpath, um, vehicles facing towards oncom oncoming traffic, and parents not utilising the nearby pedestrian crossing, and has provided photographs of such parking activity. 
These concerns in relation to parking, et cetera, have been discussed in the main body of the report. I've also sought some additional comments from the Highway Authority in relation to parking, and, that they, and they have com, com, confirmed that they cannot formalise parking on the footway outside the site, as parking in this location will be illegal and a matter for the police authority. They've also said that parking in the highway is allowed, but they would not wish to have designated parking bays outside the facility. The highway itself is available for the public and all users, and therefore they cannot um, agree to parking bays in this location. They've also said that obviously there is a car park further down Fackery's Lane and there is on-street parking in the area. They also indicate that, accept that Thackeray's Lane is a busy distributed road. They estimate that it carries approximately 15 to 20,000 vehicles on an average day, and there are times that traffic is heavy. But, but they do not have any concerns or have had any reports or complaints recently of parking or severe congestion in the area. They have also noted that there has been ongoing roadworks in the surrounding area, and these may have encouraged traffic to use this as an alternative route through Arnold and Woodthorpe. Taking into the above into account, it's accepted that there may be incidents of congestion outside the premises and along Thackeray's Lane. However, it is considered that the dispersal of visits and drop-offs early and later in the day is likely to alleviate this, notwithstanding the increase in children proposed. The MPPF in relation to highway safety is clear that planning permission should only be refused if residual cumulative impact on the road network would be severe. There is no specific definition of what severe would be, and to some extent, every application is judged on its own merits. Uh, a recent inpe inspector's appeal decision does, however, hopefully, uh, helpfully discuss this matter and states that the term severe sets a high bar for intervention via, via the planning system in traffic effects arising from a development. It also goes on to say that, in this instance, uh, mere congestion and inconvenience was not sufficient to trigger the severe test, but rather it was then a question for whether there were any consequences from such congestion. Um, I suggest that this is a reasonable approach, and based on the fact that the Highway Authority has not objected to the scheme, nor has there been any recorded accidents or complaints in relation to highway safety in the proximity of the site in relation to this, uh, to the existing operation, it is unlikely that the proposal would result in an unacceptable increase in highway safety issues or unacceptable con uh, congestion uh, and pedestrians would still have the ability to safely cross the road due to the presence of the pedestrian crossing adjacent to the site. In relation to parking and blocking of drives, um, a note to applicant is proposed regarding the possibility of H-bar markings outside the premises. Uh, moving on to the extension itself, this would be located to the rear of the, uh, of the property and as such would not be readily visible from Thackeray's Lane. The extension would not result in any significant overlooking or loss of privacy or overshadowing due to the window openings proposed being at high level and there being adequate separation to the, to the neighbouring properties. Taking into account the above matters, it is considered that the proposal is an acceptable form of development subject to the conditions outlined in the report uh, in relation to the approved plans and the restriction on the number of children on site at any one time to 48. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you, Kevin. So there you have it on page 28, application 2021 0238, 19 Thackeray's Lane, extension to existing preschool and day nursery, etc. etc. Would anybody like to move that and second it? Okay, thank you. And uh, I'll, I'll open it up for debate, but I would sort of kind of remind you that I know that there's quite an, uh, a lot of emotive push in favour of this because it is a preschool and day nursery, and obviously people say, well, we really need those things. But we've got to look at this from a strictly planning point of view and not emotively. And, you know, I'd ask you the, uh, you know, obviously... It, as it says in the, in, on the agenda, the, the planning delegation panel had quite a long discussion over the impacts of highway safety and the residential amenity uh, to such an extent. We thought it was necessary to bring it here for a, uh, for a wider discussion with the entire committee. So would anybody like to start off the debate? Okay. Um, Councillor McCrossan. Thank you, Chair. Um, as somebody who lives fairly close to this proposed um, 
reworking of uh, Coatswood School, um, I have some severe reservations and wouldn't like this to see, see this go through for two reasons. Firstly, we've touched upon the safety. Um, it is an issue, parking on the pavement, parents crossing in between roads, and Thackeray's Lane is one of the busiest roads in Gedling. Having li living only 75 metres from the school, I've seen it firsthand, parents crossing in between parked vehicles. On the opposite side of the school is the bus stop. When the bus is there, there's cars parked on there. The gap between what cars try to race for, through is probably no more than five, six metres, seven at the most. So you have a, a, an issue there. Um, beyond that, this building is basically just a shally bungalow. It is in a residential area. The view from the rear elevation is overbearing to the properties either side, property 21 and 17, and I've seen it for myself on both sides. The school is not equipped for 50 pupils. Just a bit of history, going back 40 years or so ago, the lady that first started this off had a, a nursery of 12 pupils. Jumping from 12 to for 50, obviously my experience is education, is huge and would be totally out of place. This building has now outgrown its purposefulness and should not be granted this. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I was at the de delegation panel along with other colleagues um, where we, uh, we did have a lengthy um, discussion. Um, my particular concern is highway safety. Um, I really am not thrilled by um, by the uh, uh, by this uh, this element of the uh, uh, you know of the application. However, I do acknowledge that highways have raised no objection, and that does that would make it very difficult for us to object to this this application um, on you know on the grounds of high, high, highway safety, and that does give me a little bit of a dilemma. Um, uh, you know, at, at, at this stage, um, but I, I think it would be difficult to object on on those grounds. Whatever our own personal reservations are, we we have to a large extent have to be guided by by the experts, which is the the, the highway authority. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Barnes. Chairman, um, I'm not particularly happy with this application at all. I think it's in the wrong place, too many children, a busy, busy, busy road, and to say you're going to stop people parking on the pavement, it's a laugh. The county council has got no interest. We're trying to get, we've, we've got, as a, as a department, we've got the problem with our dustbin lorries going down roads where we can't get through because there's that many cars parked on the pavement or on the street, and yet they, get, they say this is quite acceptable. This is nonsense. This is a busy, busy road. There's buses going down there. There's lorries coming from the Mapley Top down there onto Valley Road. It's the main junction, and it, it's absolutely silly to, to say we can have extra kids in that school. And then to, then to throw it back on us and to say we've got some parking spaces further down when we don't know as an authority what we're going to do with that bit of parking space on Thackeray's Lane. But I think it's absolutely moral to put kids under that position where they're going to possibly get knocked down. I passed that place Thursday, I think it was, last Thursday, and there was cars parked on the pavement, three cars parked on the pavement outside that nursery, and that's not going to stop, and I think this is a retrograde step, and I will certainly not be supporting it, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Bonfather. Yes, thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I don't know this school. I know the area very well, but I don't know the school as such. But picking up on Councillor Macrossan, it indicates that the school's actually been there for 40 years. So we're not actually considering an application today to create a school in a residential area of what is effectively a house. We are looking at whether or not that provision, which is currently permitted, should be extended. So taking you, uh, uh, your comments earlier about taking the emotion out of this, 
We're not talking about it being extended from 12 children 40 years ago to 48 children today. We're talking about extending it from 40 children to potentially 48 children today. So we're with an increase effectively of some 20% potentially, but extending the hours of provision, which would actually alleviate some of the issues about dropping children off at the start of the peak travel period in the morning and collecting those children at the start of the peak travel period in the evening by extending the hours, it would to some degree alleviate or ameliorate the potential parking problems that have been described by other colleagues. The bulk of the objections would appear to be about road safety. I, I accept that there are other issues of, of overbearing um, and, and the fact that it's not conducive to the um, lifestyle amenity of, of neighbours, but it exists already, and, and that's the point I keep coming back to. We are not creating a new monster. Uh, the, the, the monster, if that's what it is, already exists. All we're actually doing is trying to, in some ways, ameliorate the difficulties of the current start and closing time by allowing a small extension. I note that the County Highways Department raised no objections, and I am assuming that in, in officers' uh, considerations, they've also spoken to the police, and I am assuming that the police raised no issues, and I think that Mr. Cartwright said that there is no history of complaints, presumably to this authority or indeed any other, in the recent past. And I am assuming from police statistics that there is no evidence of any road traffic accidents, either fatal, serious or minor, that have been attributed to this uh, existing development. Is that correct, Mr. Cartwright? Through you, Chairman. We haven't had comments from the police, but we have had comments from the Highway Authority, and they've confirmed they have had no complaints in relation to parking, and there's no accident record in the vicinity. Based on the, obviously, that is based on the current operation. We are obviously looking at the potential intensification of the use. Yeah, thank you. I'm grateful for that. Um, Councillor Paling. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I too was on the planning delegation panel and ex expressed extreme concern about the traffic. Y you said that the traffic was possibly due to the roadworks in Arnold. They're completed now. At school time this morning, it was terrible at the junction. You may say that's because of the gar, but when the gar opens, that is going to be part of the through route from the gar. I'm still worried that highways haven't recognised the rush hour needs uh, and that many of the children will be going to that school in the rush hour. All of our maintained schools have got crossed zigzag lines outside them and double yellow lines about parking. Because it's a private school, there's nothing there. Which means that because it's a wide pavement, we cannot really do the enforcement that we might do in other places. In my own neighbourhood, we got yellow lines put down because of pavement parking on a dangerous corner. That actually annoyed the locals, but they did eventually understand and comply because the enforcement officers went to see. I am really concerned about pavement parking with people trying to cross the road when they're in a desperate rush because they're running that little bit late and it will be in the rush hour and it's an accident waiting to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Adams. Sorry, I didn't see you indicating, Councillor Parr. My apologies. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I think there's... Um, it, the potential uh, issue that we've got with regard to traffic has been there no matter how many children go to the school for years. And I should know because I took my granddaughter on a day-by-day, week-by-week uh, uh, itinerary to that school. And I didn't see, experience any kind of problem with the traffic. I used to park opposite on probably where 
uh, Councillor Macrossan lives. But I did park out the way. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, there wasn't any big issues there. And I, I think it can be uh, managed if, if you want to, if you want a better word, then we need to find one via highways. But at the moment, I go by there and I don't see the kind of problems that uh, we think we see. And I think it, there's a lot of that about because it is a busy time of the day and it is a busy time at the end of the day. But I will be uh, supporting the uh, proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Did you want to come in? Yes, Councillor Adams. Thank you very much, Chairman. Yeah, just, just a couple of points of clarification uh, initially, please. Um, just, just, there is a Pelican Crossing, isn't there, situated a short way after the school, heading outbound towards the A60. No, towards the Vale. It is the A60, isn't it? Yeah, it is the A60. Um, and there's also a reservation, I believe, as well, nearer towards the actual roundabout, on the actual roundabout uh, junction, I believe, there's a, a crossing, a, um, what do we call those? Central Reservation bollards, I believe, also. So there, there are key crossing points available to people if they so choose uh, to use them. Um, so, yeah, so just a couple of things, really. I mean, I think... I think there's, there's, there's an important issue that's being missed here from, from, a, from a public uh, help point of view in some degrees. There, there are a lot of people out there that uh, don't work uh, jobs that finish at four o'clock in the afternoon and start at nine in the morning. There are people that start at 7.30, 8 o'clock, and some of them don't finish, you know, till, till six, half past six. And so the increase in hours um, will be a very worthwhile to support to many hardworking parents that need to get their children uh, somewhere uh, safe to be cared for while they're while they're out working. Um, so you know, I know that may sound emotive. I think it's actually quite an important part of this application because I think it really reinforces how successful that will be. Chris, uh, Councillor Barnfather makes a point around um, the school already in existence, which is obviously also true um, and has been there for a very very long time. Um, again, I was brought up in Woodthorpe, so I know it. I know it very well. Um, and yes, you will see an increase uh, in numbers, uh, no doubt, also. But we've had no negative comments uh, from highways. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, the actual application itself, I think, will do a lot more good uh, there. And because, you know, the, the statistics that have come out aren't uh, negative um, towards um, pedestrian safety. Um, and so I will be uh, supporting this wholeheartedly tonight. Thank you. Councillor Miller. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've listened carefully uh, to people who know the area. Unfortunately, I don't. But I do live opposite a primary school with 500 uh, children there. And there is a preschool as well. And actually, parents driving in cars to drop the children off uh, I can remember years and years ago as a school governor complaining about parking, but these people just don't understand. And we've had three accidents over a period of 10 years, but what I got from highways at the time, because um, as a school governor, and all the governors signed it, we wrote to highways and said that we wanted something doing. Nothing was done, but now, all of a sudden, we've got highways uh, are coming to Netherfield where I live, and they're actually restricting and putting yellow lines down uh, so that people won't park there, but I can guarantee they will. They don't understand the law. They're only worried, I think, as one councillor mentioned, uh, in the rush hour, people have got jobs, they're dropping the kids off, and as long as, you know, it's, I, I worry about the health uh, and safety all the time of the children, because you get some people, they're not just, they're probably doing favours for the parents, uh, and they've got two or three children, and it's impossible 
we live on a long street, uh, the school, all the traffic signs are there, but nobody bothers. And I just think, uh, just to accommodate more people, they should be thinking about the children, because I would hate to see an accident. I've seen three, not serious, but sooner or later they will be. And this, to me, is the perfect thing. I will be refusing it on the ground of health and safety of people, not just mums, the children that are excited, they love going to school, they want to get there, but I do think we do need more supervision. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Scruggy. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've been listening to councillors talking about this application and something strikes me as familiar about this and I'm sure the Porchester ward members will uh, remember this. A couple of years ago we had uh, a preschool uh, on West Hill Lane and we were faced with a similar situation of increased traffic due to increasing the school via an extension. Now obviously bus stops on West Hill Lane right outside the school a crossing as well outside the school um, but if memory serves me correct at the time there was no uh, basis in planning law to reject that even though some members felt strongly about it um, I think with the comment from highways in this application uh, stating that they don't see an issue with it um, that kind of sort of could leave us open um, to I don't know, a, a, a planning um, overturn if this is rejected. So at the minute, I'm a bit conflicted, um, um, and I'll just wait to hear what other members have to say. Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Chair. At the risk of repeating what uh, some other members have said, I, I think this uh, hinges on the fact that uh, the Highway Authority has no objection to it. Um, it's already been uh, uh, said how long the existing facility has been in operation. During that time, there are, have, the Highways Authority has received no comments or complaints, uh, and there have been no accidents. Uh, it's obviously up to the people who use it uh, to make sure that the children are safe in accessing it. So I see absolutely no reason whatsoever. Uh, and I would uh, point out to members the issue of highway safety, apart from what the Highway Authority have said, is thoroughly discussed on pages 34 and 35. Uh, so uh, I think uh, you will probably realize that I will be supporting this. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else like to contribute to the debate? Councillor Elwood. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, I'm um, just looking at uh, uh, section 7.3. Um, it's referring to an op open courtyard area at first floor level. Um, just have a little, uh, some concerns about that, cons considering this is like a, pre a, pre uh, a preschool age um, school. Um, is it, yeah, that I was going to say, maybe just clarify where that actually is on the, on the, on the plan there. Um, I mean, what, what purpose is that for? Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, it's actually sort of it's actually an enclosed area. That you, I think you're saying there's the ability for perhaps for children to fall out or anything like that. That's, that's not the case. It is enclosed. There's just the, the fact that there's the ability to to get open air coming in it. But that's I think it's 1.8 meters above the ground level there. So it's just an area that's open above 1.8 meters. Correct, yes. They're enclosed at a height of 1.8 metres all the way around, and it's just the ability for air to come in at the top sort of thing. So it's not like a true 
courtyard as, you, as you'd want. To, but then there's also the, the courtyard at the bottom as well. Obviously, you know, the rear area, just at, at ground floor level. Nigel can point that out. That's the area, and then the one at the ground floor. Then there's just the normal area at the back. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else like to contribute to the debate? No? No. Well, it is obviously a difficult one. And I'm also very divided over this. Um, I'm really surprised at highways. Um, as anybody who has travelled uh, down any of the, the feeder roads into um, Zachary's Lane roundabout, I mean, it's well known as, as being a bottleneck, whichever way it goes or whichever way you're going. And, you know, it, it, you know I wonder if Highways has actually been out and tried driving around it themselves before coming to this decision that... There is, uh, they see no problems with it, but of course it does raise the problem which has have been raised by other people, by other councillors already, is that you know, if highways have okayed it, it's very difficult for us to then go and object to it because obviously the so-called independent government planning inspector will uh, inevitably side with highways and um, come to a different decision. So it is... Um, it is a very difficult one. But nevertheless, we have to make a decision. And uh, I uh, ask you to turn your attention to the recommendation on page 37, which is that we grant planning permission subject to conditions. So I will... Uh, sorry, Councillor McCrossan. One more point. Um, obviously, it sounds to me from the conversation we've had this evening that it looks like it's going to go through. But putting my school teacher hat on of some 39 years, would, it, would one of the conditions be that we have some signage? Because one thing that hasn't been spoken, there isn't one bit of signage on that road that alerts any motorist that that is a school. So if this does go through, could one of the conditions be that the school pays for the signage? Shouldn't be a it shouldn't be a council issue. It should be a, it's a private company. They should pay for the signage. Every school I know, including my own, which was tucked away on a residential, it still had signs. There isn't one sign. And the only sign that here is it says Coatswood House, and it's set back 18 or so inches from the inside of the gate of the school. So there's no means by any motorist to know that that is a school. I notice in the, um, on page 37 of the conditions, there's a reference there to the uh, putting advisory H-bar markings. But I think this is more to do with, um, with parking, isn't it? Yeah, I wasn't necessarily referring to parking, I was referring to... Sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. One more point. The, in addition to signage, there is usually outside of a school where you're going to have children come out. They do get excited. We know that children look forward to going home as much as they do to looking going forward to school. But there is no bar to stop those children running into the road either. Most schools have something that alerts children that there is a busy, busy road. And if there are going to be any conditions, they would be two that I would definitely... Thank you. Through you, Chairman. Yeah, the, the H-bar markings are physical markings on the road itself that would sort of try and prevent people from parking outside neighbouring driveways, etc. So they're an advisory marking just to try and encourage mm. people not to block people's drives. Councillor McCrossan was talking about sort of advanced, perhaps advanced warning signs in relation to the location of the school. Um, I would suggest they would need to be in the highway itself rather than uh, within the application site. So they're not certainly anything we could control through this planning application. That would need to be a separate conversation with the highway authority because they would need to be comfortable that the server function don't block visibility, etc., and, and don't impede the highway itself by their location. So I wouldn't want to encourage that to be a, a condition of any approval. I, I agree with you, Mr. Carter. I, I think that would be unreasonable to attach conditions to any planning permission granted 
requiring signage to be provided in the highway when that, that has no support of the highways authority. So if the highways authority had some concerns and in their view considered that signage was required or, or any other mitigation to make this development acceptable, they would have been detailed in the comments from the highways authority. And as outlined by Mr. Cartwright, we have had some very detailed comments from the highways authority. It has been given significant consideration. Councillor Truscott mentioned earlier on um, that you know, if the council uh, were minded to uh, refuse permission, there would be a right of appeal to the planning inspectorate. At this point, I would just advise members that if, the, if permission were ultimately refused on highway safety grounds, the applicant would have the right of appeal but they could also make a cost application. So we would need to be able to demonstrate some demonstrable harm to highway safety. And given the highways authority have raised no objection, my advice to members would be that that, that, that could potentially be problematic and difficult for the council. Thank you, Mike. Okay, are you all content that we now move to the vote? Recommendation, page 36, grant planning permission subject to two conditions listed below. All those in favour, please show. And against. And abstentions. Okay, thank you. That... Um, application has been granted thank you very much I know it's not uh, I'm apprehensive about it as well okay let's move on to the next item on the agenda which is agenda item 5 which you'll find on page 40 which is 96 Plains Road Mapperley the erection of nine dwellings And I'll ask um, Principal Planning Officer Nigel Bryan to uh, explain this in more detail. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, this is a standalone full application for the erection of nine dwellings on land to the rear of 96 Plains Road and adjacent to Mapley Golf Course. There is no extant planning permission on the site, although there is a resolution to grant outline permission for residential development dating back to 2014. There are no overriding policy constraints to the site, which is considered to be a broadly sustainable location and um, with a good access to services. There's, there was a reason, reasonably significant change of levels you had through the site toward the golf course. Um, the nine dwellings um, to be erected would be large in size and have, have no less than five bedrooms. Vehicle access would be from Bailey Drive. Whilst the proposal is at a lower density than would normally be supported, this is considered to be appropriate in regard to the built form that surrounds it would respect the character of the area. The impact on residential amenity would also be acceptable in that the rear gardens um, would be in the region of 11.5 metres in depth, and the built form would also not have a detrimental impact on the amenity of existing properties in the, in the locality, not notably those on Bailey Drive. Whilst the application is not a major, the site is over 0.4 of a hectare in size, and therefore a contribution in lieu of public open space is required. The report identifies a contribution of £17,635 is targeted to be spent at the park on the corner of Bailey Drive and Plains Road. However, this area of public open space remains under the control of a private company. Therefore, rather than explicitly identifying that the money will be spent on this park, as it may not be possible to reach agreement with the site owner, it is requested that the wording of the legal agreement identify that the money uh, be spent in the locality in accordance with the open space SPD. The legal agreement is also intended to secure a management company for maintenance of the estate road and other land not within the curtilage of a property. The application is therefore deemed to comply, be policy compliant and recommended um, for approval subject to the conditions as outlined on pages 47 to 51 of the committee report and subject to the signing of a section 106 legal agreement. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Well, uh, there you have the application 2021 stroke 0737. 96 Plains Road, election of nine dwellings on page 40. Would anybody like to move that application? Thank you. And second. 
Okay, well, I'll open this up for debate. Would anybody like to start? Councillor Paling. Thank you. Uh, while I will support the application, I am disappointed that yet more executive large houses are being built at a time when we really need smaller homes for families in the area. Um, I don't know if it was just to dodge having further 106 monies against them if they uh, extended the provision. I really don't know that. Um, but we, we have a lot of executive homes. We have a lot of places where they could build them. This is near to the centre of Arnold and could well be suited to families with less money. So I'm disappointed, but I, I will be supporting the application. Thank you. Anybody else like to contribute to this debate? Councillor Elwood. Thanks, Chair. Um, kind of following on from uh, uh, Councillor Paling's comments, in a way, um, it refers to the density of the uh, of the um, application and the fact that nearby the density is is a low density. So, does this mean that? If you've got an application where you've got low density around it, then by definition, you, the, this sort of 30 house per hectare rule is ignored. Um, it, it, it sort of kind of falls on a little bit from what that, the, that previous application in Burton Joyce last time. So if you've got a high density area, then an application will will have a high density but if you've got low density around it then you you're going for a lower density i just wanted sort of clarification on how this uh, uh lpd 33 kind of operates really thank you thank you very much councillor barnes <laughs> Going on, Councillor Barnes. Out to the country park or the, or the getting colliery, the uh, getting golf course. Is there any plans to put some trees there so they can't? Because some of the houses on what backs onto the country park, make, making it so they can come out their back garden and have a nice little <coughs> patio on our country park, and uh, and that's a, an ideal position where they could probably do that. Is there anything in the in the planning application application which says they can't do come onto our land and make it a sort of extra bit of the garden. If they can't stray outside of their property lines, but, uh, well, you want to build, uh, you want to grow a row of, of trees there out of spite. <laughs> Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, in response to uh, Councillor Barnes' query there, I've actually got Google Earth, uh, up in, in front of me now, and I, I think what he's referring to is, is actually on uh, Mapley Golf Course, and it does appear to be um, uh, uh, quite an extensive uh, expense, expanse of, uh, of trees there already. So I think that's uh, dealt with his, uh, his concerns. Just coming back to what Councillor, um, the point that Councillor Elwood made in relation to policy LPD 33. Um, so I've reviewed the policy and the policy is clear. Um, so in terms of what the policy states, the planning permission will not be granted for proposals for residential development of less than 30 dwellings per hectare. One of the ex exceptions is locations where there's convincing evidence of a need for a different figure. So what Mr. Bryan had done in the report is he's had and in assessing the application is he's had regard to the character of the area. Um, you know, there is a, a significant amount of low density development in that particular locality. And that in this instance is, is a convincing need for a different figure having regard to the, the character of the wider area. 
Anybody else like to uh, make a comment? Uh, for myself, I mean, you you probably aware that I'm I find these sort of overdone vanity architecture distasteful. Uh, but as it's all been tucked away in its own little ghetto, it's not going to have a detrimental effect on the, on the street scene. So I'd vote in favour in favour of this application. Done. We'll move to the vote. Okay. So we have the recommendation on page 47. Grant Planning Commission subject the owners entering into planning obligations with the Borough Council, the local planning authority for financial contributions, etc., etc., etc. Can I see all those in favour, please? Show. And again, stand abstentions. Thank you. That was carried unanimously. Uh, let's move on to the next one, please. Which is agenda item six, which you'll find on page 54, which is application number 2021 stroke 0727 Fairacre and 335 Mapley Plains, a reserved matters application for appearance and landscaping. I'll ask. Um, Principal Planning Officer Nigel Bryan to introduce this. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just for clarification, there is a, a typo in um, paragraph 2.2 .2 on page 55, which um, incorrectly identifies what was considered the outline stage. For the avoidance of doubt, the proposal is a reserve matters made pursuant to outline permission 2017-1276. At the outline, access, layout and scale were approved. As a result, the only matters under consideration for this application are are appearance and landscaping. The appearance of the dwellings are considered to be appropriate, with red brick as a predominant um, uh, building material, along with um, small sections of, of cladding under concrete tile roofs. And the landscaping scheme will have gardens laid to lawn, um, with uh, low level uh, planting to the front, and trees, beech, and Norway maple in the larger rear gardens. However, in regards to the, the matters under consideration as part of this reserve matters, which is limited in, in appearance and landscaping, it is recommended that a proposal be granted consent subject to conditions as outlined on paragraphs, um, pages 59 and 60 of the committee report. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Nigel. So it's uh, application 2021-0727, reserve matters application. Would somebody like to move it? Thank you. And second, thank you. Would somebody like to open the debate on this application? Nope. Are you content we move straight to the vote then? Okay. So be it. The uh, Recommendation is on page 59 that the Borough Council re grant reserve matters approval subject to the uh, following conditions. All those in favour, please show. Okay. And again, stand abstentions. That is carried unanimously. Right, let's swiftly move on to agenda item seven. Burnt Stump Country Park, Lower Car Park. This is on page 62 of your agenda papers, and I've already uh, stated our uh, declaration of non-pecuniary interest. And I'd also uh, remind you that on paragraph 7716, there is a typo, which is on page 67. Uh, right at the top there, it says, it is therefore considered that the proposal um, fails to accord with section 12 of the NPPF, it should say that the proposal is in accordance with section 12 of the NPPF. So it's quite a major typo. Right, I'll ask Principal Planning Officer Kevin Cartwright to introduce this one for us. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the proposal relates to the direct erection of palisade fencing to separate the police car parking area from the public parking spaces and the provision of a new entrance barrier, lighting and CCTV columns, and a footpath link from the car park linking back to the exist existing footpath that serves the police headquarters. The application site is within the ownership of the Borough Council and is located within the Greenbelt. Just confirming the uh, comments from the Chairman, 
by way of completeness, para 7.6 on page 67 of the report, the proposal is in accordance with the policies and not contrary. The car park barrier would be left open between the hours of 6pm and 6am so that the general public can use the car park when not in use by the police. Access to the country park for maintenance of pedestrians would be maintained in accordance with our lease. No objections have been received as a result of the, consulta of the consultation exercise. Our tree officer has expressed concerns in relation to the possible impact of the footpath link on the adjacent trees. The trees in question are not the subject of a tree preservation order. However, in order to ensure no harm to these trees, condition three is recommended that requires our tree officer to be in attendance prior to any excavations close to these trees. Uh, members may recall the adjacent planning application for significant extensions to the police headquarters, which would facilitate its use as a shared headquarters for the police and fire and rescue. This application can be seen as a supporting scheme, and as such, there are very special circumstances for this development within the Greenbelt. The car park and associated lighting and CCTV can be seen as an integral part of the wider site, and as such, is recommended for approval subject to the conditions listed in the main report. Thank you, Jim. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, application 2021, uh, stroke 0240, Burnt Slope Country Park, alterations to existing car park to include fencing, etc. Would anybody like to move that application and second it? Thank you very much. Would anybody like to open the debate on this one? Councillor Barnes. Can you put your... Uh... I support this application and I, I recommend it. The, the fact that the, the police and the fire brigade are going to be there and it'll make it more secure. I think the most important thing about that is it's keeping the parking good, Nick. And by the, keeping the police here with the bobber too, we can keep... If we need a bobber too, we can always ask the police and the fire brigade to make a contribution because they use it and it's the, they will, the police will use that as a recreation facility as well, which is, makes sense anyway. But I just wonder about one thing. Do, do we do we service the, do we have to service the car park because we use it or does the police service the car park <laughs> because they're not cheap when you put a new surface down on a car park if we come in two years time and say they want a new service we're talking 30 or 40 grand I'm afraid I haven't okay, got so the answer to that question, Councillor Barnes. I think it was, it's something which we probably need to... So, so that, that, that will be controlled through an estate's perspective. So in terms of the cost of undertaking the, this work, it wouldn't be at the cost of the oh, Borough Council, okay. it will be at the cost of um, the police and fire authorities. In terms of ongoing maintenance, uh, my understanding is that that will be dealt with um, through, the, through the lease arrangements, but, but, not, but not a planning matter. Thank you. OK, that's fine. Anybody else like to make a contribution towards this discussion, debate, whatever? Nope. So you're quite content to move straight to the vote, which uh, you'll find the recommendation on page 68 that the Borough Council grants planning permission subject to the following conditions. All those in favour, please show. And again, and abstentions. Thank you. That is carried unanimously. Right now, on to agenda item eight, which is a uh, TPO, Coningsby Garden East, Woodthorpe, Nottinghamshire, protection of group of seven sorbus trees by a TPO. Um, anybody like to move that TPO? Thank you. And second. Thank you. Anybody like to speak to it? Move straight to the vote. The recommendation is on page 73 to con confirm tree preservation order uh, 000142 Collinsby Garden East without modification. All those in favour, please show. And again, stand abstentions. That is carried. Agenda item nine, which is on page 76, land corner of Birchwood Drive and Mavis Avenue, Ravenshead, protection of two trees by a tree preservation order, number 00143. Anybody like to move that? And second, anybody like to speak to it? Move straight to the vote. Okay, 
All those in favour of the recommendation, which is to confirm TPO 000143 with the following modifications. The associated map be amended to show that the correct location of the T2 beech tree is within the curtilage of 2 Birchwood Drive, Ravenshead. All those in favour, please show. Thank you. And again, stand abstentions. That is carried. Agenda item 10 is future planning applications. Anybody got any questions or queries on those? Okay, agenda item 11 is the uh, planning delegation sheet. So I won't bother to go through those by one by one because you will all have uh, read them already, I'm quite sure. Which leads us to uh, agenda item 12. Any other items that the chair considers urgent? I don't have any. So I'd just like to thank you all for coming and uh, still quite a nice evening left for you to enjoy and uh, uh, wish you all, all a safe journey home. Thank you very much. Bye now.